So this video actually starts with an incredibly frustrating moment for me. Now, this motherboard arrived and I was like, yee, Christmas time, yee. Um, then I got my coolers from Noctua. So these are NHD9Ls. So these are a 3U compatible tower cooler, although I think in the configuration I have, it's gotta be 4U. It's okay, I'm installing it in a 4U case. And I was like, these are gonna be perfect. I'm gonna put two of these on the Xeons, a little something like that. I'll take that one out of the box first. And it's gonna be like, awesome. And then, heartbreak. This is the square mount for the Intel LGA 2011 and 2011 3 socket. This is what's called a narrow ILM. It is not square, and I do not have mounting hardware for it. So, a sane person would go, oh, okay, I'll give Noctua a call, and I will ask them for mounting hardware that fits, and uh, that's what I did. And then the sane person would wait for that to arrive. But we're gonna find another way. The UMI smart home system is functional and so easy to use that you set it up with just a tap. Click here to learn more. So let's kick this off with just some general explanation of what's gonna happen here today. So this is my normal test bench. This is actually the one that I ran our 18 core Xeon on when I did my initial vlog video about it when it arrived, but as you may or may not have noticed, this is a consumer grade platform. So this is just an X99 Deluxe, a GTX 780 Ti. I think I had a 980 on it when I did that video, but the point is nothing really that special. Also even consumer grade memory. So this Supermicro X10 DRH-IT is the board that I actually wanted to run these CPUs on because yes, I did indeed get two of them even though I didn't have a dual socket board to put them in before. So we have our dual 2699 V3s, each of these sporting 18 cores at 2.3 gigahertz and 36 threads for a total of 36 cores and 72 threads. And this is what I want to put on the test bench so that Ed, who's behind the camera, can get to work on validating some of the workflow optimizations that we're planning to implement with this kind of computing horsepower behind us. So things like uh, transcoding all the video footage that we ingest into formats that are easier to work with within Premiere, for example, so quickly that it doesn't delay our workflow at all. Cool stuff like that, you know. So for that, I have two kits of this KVR21R15D4K4-64. Wow, it's like they're trying to market it to gamers or something there. Just kidding, they're not at all. I have two of these Kingston Value RAM kits each with 64 gigs of capacity for a total of 128 gigs of DDR4 memory in this system to go along with the features on the motherboard that there's actually a, a really important thing here as well. So these are two Intel X540 10 gigabit NICs as well as a dedicated network interface for remote management. So that's critical because it's gonna need, be, need to be able to pull footage off at extremely high speeds of our SSD server, which you can actually learn more about here. That one featuring 24 of these SSDs that I just mentioned at the beginning of this video in RAID for extremely high speed. So, in order to play around with this, not having any compatible coolers, we're going to have to think outside of the box a little bit. And uh, I'm thinking zip ties. Okay, so, we don't even actually have our zip ties yet, but I've already found the first challenge in this build, and that is that LGA 2011 sockets have screw-in mounts here, but they actually don't pass through. So you can actually see, like I have my finger behind the hole and you, you, you can't see through it. So, um, oh, oh, it's worse than I thought. It's much worse than I thought because on some consumer grade boards, you can just poke through it, but there are actually no holes. No holes on this particular motherboard there. So, we are gonna have to really think outside the, 
No, I've got it. Okay, I just did something similarly crazy on our phase change system over there. We are going to remove the hold down plates. That could work. I'm sure Supermicro had this in mind when they sent this to me. And if they didn't, well, they should have known better. I bet Intel's Xeon team is watching this in horror right now. Yes. So now we have holes. But the thing we have to be careful of now is that this CPU is just sitting here. There's nothing holding it in other than the mounting pressure of the heat sink that we are now going to try to zip tie onto it. And, uh, we'll come back once we've found some zip ties. Maybe this will have some inside. Power supplies usually come with zip ties. Dang it, thermal take. I may have already raided the zip ties from this, so we can't necessarily conclude for certain that thermal take cheaped out on the zip ties. I mean, we have twist ties, but I don't think those will hold with the kind of pre Shut up. I was saying I don't think they'll hold. I wasn't gonna actually use them, jerk. Oh, wait, these are new power supplies. Come on, Silverstone, don't let... Oh, yes, okay. I was like, oh, they exceeded my expectations by including Velcro wraps. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, there we go. So that's uh, four fairly small zip ties, but I'll show you guys a little trick for getting the most out of small zip ties. I'm all about getting the most out of uh, small things, if you know what I mean. Computers. We build compact computers. In fact, we did one with that 18 core. You can check it out here. Well, maybe we can get by with just four. Thank you. Four for two? Yeah, four for two sockets. No, that won't work. No, that definitely won't work. Okay, well, let's try to mount one for now. And we'll see if we even succeed. It's highly probable we won't. Oh, I dropped one. So step number one of this process that I'm inventing as we go along here is to screw, actually, I wonder, no, is to remove this stock mounting plate that I had put on before. Don't try this at home, kids, or at work. In fact, especially not at work. I can't think of any reason you should be doing this at work. I mean, I'm doing it at work, but I'm a professional. Professional what? Professional warranty voider. All right, none of my stuff has warranties anyway. So this needs to be oriented. Oh, it wants to, hmm, 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 yes, hmm. So you can, uh, you can actually combine zip ties like that. So then I'm thinking we use this lip here to bring it around to the back side, maybe. This might work. Maybe it might work. That's my confidence level right now. Um, I need to kind of get this up on something so I can see under it. Get prepared to be creative about your filming here. Okay, so we want to run that through there. And then we want to run this. Oh no, it doesn't fit! Oh, also. Oh my god. <gasps> okay, hold on. Maybe that's still okay. Okay, give me a sec. Everyone just calm down for a second. Oh, we might have gotten away with one there. I don't see anything misaligned. Okay. Whew. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Let's just... Everyone just calm down. So, these heads don't go through. Which means that I'm gonna have to show you guys a little trick that I've used before called reusing a zip tie. You gotta release the, uh, the teeth in here, usually with a pin, but sometimes a knife will work. Wait, hey, how's that a trick? You're a trick. Bam. Remember, we're not benchmarking the thermal performance. We just need it to run cool enough to survive. Oh, okay, no, 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 hold on. It's okay, so it's still okay. So we run this through here. I'd like it to be known that this whole thing was actually Ed's idea. Ouch, oh, I got my nose in the, th oh, shoot. I ran it through to oh, only the one side. This may actually work. I should tell Noctua not to bother sending those mounts. 
So this is coming through at the bottom. I think it's going to reach. Okay, now we don't want to tighten it now, but I think I should, I can probably attach it now with a fair degree of confidence. Okay. So that is where that will sit. Okay, let's do the other one. So, this side up this side. This through here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty dark. But the camera can't see much. That through there. This down here. Whoa, 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 okay. Everybody just calm down. Stay cool. Okay. Whew. Don't lift out of the socket, please. Okay. Do you know it didn't vent any pins? Mm, I don't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to, okay, we need to do a bit of a reset here. I need you to grab that CPU. Thank you. That's good. It's okay, it's only $4,500. Okay, hold on. Everyone just relax for a second. Okay. You know what? We need a counterweight. That's what we need. Where's that power supply? Uh, no, I need something heavy. There. Now I can work on it from underneath. Much more easily. Okay. And... Tighten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I'm sweating. Okay. I think I need some pliers. Let's get some pliers going on here. <sighs> hmm. Okay. That's actually on there, not too bad. Maybe you could just put a hand on the other heat sink for me. Preferably right here because it'll leave fingerprints on the top of the heat sink. Prep the workbench, Nurse Ratchet! I'll be playing the part of Nurse Ratchet today. We don't have a real Nurse Ratchet. Um, almost none of this does. I had really thought that this test bench was EATX compatible. This must not, I haven't even, I just realized, I don't know what form factor this is. So I'm going to resort to a, a long standing benchmarking tradition. The cardboard box the motherboard came in. Test bench. There we go. Okay. There we go. We've got a special present from NVIDIA just for this. A second Titan X. We are going to be crushing some benchmarks, hopefully. Not SLI, not gaming benchmarks. Because to my knowledge, this motherboard does not support SLI. No, we want compute benchmark performance. Hmm. So right next to each other. Oh, I guess I could just do this. <laughs> oh, you know what? These are actually labeled for which CPU they're running off of. So this is CPU 1 slot 1. This is CPU 1 slot 3. And then these ones are running off of CPU 2. Yeah, all of these. So I'm running all of my PCIe cards off CPU 1, apparently. Okay. I don't have a manual, so I don't actually know where the front panel switches are. Power should be these two. CPUs look like they're seated correctly. This RAM should be compatible. I don't know how long these server motherboards take to post. Hopefully not very long, because my nerves are shot. Well, we may be defeated for now. We'll pick this up again tomorrow. And on that note, it's time to throw you guys a little bit more information about the UMI that we talked about at the beginning of the video. 
pretty much the idea here is that it's supposed to be so simple to use to set up your home for smart security and like smart automation that you don't even need a manual. Just pretty much touch and go. It comes with an edge-to-edge -edge glass remote with a built-in touchscreen for home theater and smart home control. And it's one of the first systems that can be used offline. So you don't actually need internet connectivity all the time. So the idea is pretty simple. Great functionality, easy to use, and check out the link in the video description if you guys want to learn more about it. Okay, so I hung around for about 15 minutes and worked on this after Ed had to go home yesterday. And there's good news and bad news. So the good news, and those of you who have done a fair bit of PC troubleshooting will recognize this. We're down to bare essentials. Video out, one stick of RAM per CPU, and you can see I actually put the socket back on. Um, and in this configuration, two things happened. Number uno. Uh, number uno. Well, didn't even need to do anything that time. The power switch works. Number two, instant post. The bad news is I don't know why. Seated correctly. This RAM should be compatible. These server motherboard. 